Whenever we move, most of the muscles in our body do work on the bones. The muscles apply force and move the bones a distance. This force moving an object over a distance is work in a mechanical system. But there's one very important muscle in your body, which is probably the hardest working of all, and it does not move a single bone. Your heart is an example of work being done in a fluid system. Every day, it uses pressure to move blood through your body. In your lifetime, it will pump up to 230 million liters of blood, enough to fill a large football stadium. Work in a fluid system is similar to work in a mechanical system because something is being moved from one place to another by force. But instead of measuring force, pressure difference acts like force to move fluids. And instead of measuring the distance the fluid moves, we measure how much fluid has moved or the volume. So work in a fluid system, like this dairy farm, is only done when a volume of fluid is moved from one place to another by pressure. If the fluid does not move, no work is being done, even if the pressure is present. There are two ways that work can be done in a fluid system. In one, the pressure changes, but the volume remains constant. And in the other, the pressure remains steady while the volume changes. Let's look at the first case. In some power dams, a portion of the water that flows through the dam is pumped back up at night. This gives them an extra reserve during the peak hours. The pump that moves the water from the base of the dam to the top does fluid work. To calculate that work, two things are needed. First, the volume of water. This can be read directly from the flow meter. Next, we need to know the pressure difference. You'll recall from our study of force that pressure in a fluid can be calculated from the depth of the water. This gives us delta P, the pressure difference between the top of the dam and the bottom. Remember that delta means difference. So the work done by the pump is the pressure difference times the volume. The same is true for your heart. You have a fixed volume of blood, but your blood pressure, your delta P, changes. Now let's suppose we want to look at the individual parts of a pump, such as the piston in a hydraulic cylinder. In this case, the pressure exerted by the piston does not change. But when the piston moves the fluid into or out of the cylinder, the volume changes. This volume of fluid that was moved is delta V. So the work done by the piston in the hydraulic cylinder is pressure times the volume difference, or delta V. By the way, delta V is also referred to as the displacement of a cylinder, and it's one of the big selling points in engines. So if you see 350 cubic inches, that's the delta V, the displacement of all the cylinders. In other words, it's the volume of gas that is moved through the cylinders by the pressure from the pistons. A jet engine is a good example of work being done in a fluid system. When air enters the engine, it's compressed, mixed with fuel, then ignited here. When the burning gases expand, they create a large pressure difference. This causes work to be done on the gases, forcing them to move from the area of high pressure to low. As they move, they pass over the turbines, causing them to spin. They, in turn, spin the intake fan that actually provides the thrust. To Jim Hawkins, this fan does fluid work. Before, we saw fluids doing work on the mechanical system. So we look at the fan, we see an example of the mechanical device doing work on the fluid system. Now, some engines have large intakes such as this, and some use small fans, as this is an example. Now, the relationship between volume of air and pressure is such that if we reduce the volume, we have to significantly increase the pressure in order to maintain the same amount of work. Now, when we do this, we have to significantly increase the speed this causes an increase in noise. Therefore, the trend in aviation today is to use a large intake moving a small or large volume of air at a reduced speed.
You can hear this effect for yourself the next time you're at an airport. Listen to the sound of jets with large fans compared to those with small ones. Engines with large intake fans move large volumes of air under low pressure. This is why some of the biggest jets in the world make the least noise. Military jets, on the other hand, have small intakes and use extremely high pressures, making them the noisiest of all. But whether noisy or quiet, the amount of work done by the engine depends on both the pressure, which acts like force, and the volume of fluid that was moved. Work in fluid systems completely surround us every day. When you watch a weather forecast, the weather person is showing you the delta P's for the Earth. It's these pressure differences that cause the massive volume of air that surrounds the Earth to move from one place to another. With no work done on the air, there would be no wind. Work in a fluid system is useful because it can be recovered and turned into other kinds of work. For example, the work done by the sun to move the air around the Earth and generate wind can be converted into mechanical work of turning a windmill. This mechanical work can then become electricity. In the same way, the work of raising water the height of the dam can be recovered when the water flows through the penstocks and becomes the mechanical work of turning the turbines. But remember, like work in mechanical systems, pressure is not enough. Work is not done until the fluid moves.